Hello and welcome to Zip Code Lookup with Power Query. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. By the end of this video, you'll be able to have a table of zip codes and use Power Query to retrieve the information about those zip codes from a free web API. It's pretty cool. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. So there's this free web service, this free API that allows you to pass it a zip code and get back information about that zip code, including the primary city and state. To show you what it returns, I'll open this link in a web browser. And here's the information it returns. It returns is the country and country abbreviation, the place name or the city, longitude, latitude, state, name and state abbreviation. So we can easily use Power Query to retrieve these results as well. And when we look at this URL, we can see that the zip code is the last segment. So let's get it with Power Query. Data from web. In the resulting from web dialog, we just paste the URL and we'll retrieve the results for this zip code. Click OK. And since this is a free public API, we can just click Connect. And this opens the Power Query Editor. And what we can see is we have country, country abbreviation, postcode, and then we have places in the format of a list. So we click this list, and then we click Record. And this reveals the data that we're after. So what we can do is just click Home, Close and Load To, and we want to send the result into a table in an existing worksheet right here, and click OK. And now we see the results right in Excel. What would really be nice is if we could make this more dynamic so that we could give it any zip code and have it return those results rather than passing the zip code as part of the URL. So let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. Let's say we wanted to get the data for all of these zip codes. So let's first of all get this table into Power Query. We can do that by going to Data, From Table Range. This once again opens the Power Query editor. Now first of all, Power Query automatically changed the data type for these columns and we don't want that because you can see as a number, it removes the leading zeros. So I'm going to delete that. And I'm actually going to change this into a text data type. Okay, much better. Now let's go to add column and let's use invoke custom function. What this lets us do is call another function query. Currently, we don't have any function queries in the workbook. But no problem, we can just repurpose the existing query from exercise one. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next exercise. Exercise three. So we have the query from the first exercise. And what we basically need to do is set it up so that this zip code is an argument or function parameter, and then to return these results. So the way that we can do that is we're just going to edit this query, right click and edit. And then we go to view advanced editor. Now, all we really need to do is set up the function signature, meaning what is the function argument or parameter that we're going to pass? Well, we're going to pass in an argument that we're going to call zip code, and it's going to be a text. And then we want the function to return a record. And then what we need to do is replace this hard coded zip code and use the concatenation operator, the ampersand to join in our zip code argument. And then we can click done. And now we can see this has been converted into a function which means we can enter that zip code parameter and get the results. Let me go ahead and give this function a better name. I'm going to call it FN zip lookup. Now let's go back to our zip code list. So once again, we go from table range. We want these zip codes to be in a text data type. So we retain this leading zero. So I'm going to delete the automatic change type step. And I'm actually going to change this to a text. Now we can go to add column, invoke custom function. We're going to give our new column a name. I'm going to call it zip data. And the function query is our FN zip lookup function. And for the zip code argument, we can give it a text or a column name. We're going to give it a column name, which column the zip column, and we're going to click OK. And now we get this alert about data privacy. So let's click continue. And we're going to say ignore privacy levels, save. And now we have this zip data column with the records. So we can click on one of them and we can get a preview. And here's another preview. So it looks like it's working. So to send this into Excel, what we're going to do is we're going to expand and we can pick and choose which columns we want to return to Excel. For now, we'll just use all of them and I'll click OK. And here it looks like they worked. So now what we can do is home, close and load two, and we're going to send it to an existing worksheet, exercise three, click a cell and OK. And let's head over to exercise three, and it looks like it worked. Let me close the queries and connections panel, and now we've got it. 
Now the nice thing is that once this is set up, we can just go back to our data source. And what if we add a new record like T011 and the transaction amount was $100 and it was from 90001. Now let's go refresh our results table. We don't even need to open the Power Query editor here. We can just go to our results table, right click and refresh. And here it comes in. Now that API does have rate limits. And so in small batches, we should be good. But if your zip code list starts to have 100, 1,000, 10,000 rows, then you might encounter those rate limits. But for small batches like this, it works awesome. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 